Coming to you from Homebrew Studios, it's Bob and John's Super Duper Variety Power Hour with your host, Bob Katie, and John Picarillo! Welcome to episode 128 of Bob and John's Super Duper Variety Power Hour. Welcome aboard, folks. Welcome aboard. Hello. <laughs> no, as you can see, we have uh, Captain Personalities not here. <laughs> Where's John? He's in Italy. They, they say it takes three people to fill in. For That's right. Minimum. That's Minimum. right. Minimum. Actually, you guys are the first. Uh, we were the first foursome on the show. <laughs> that's true <laughs> We've only done three at a time I feel like that's, a virgin That's fitting after John's story from uh, Italy <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait till those stories come out oh, next well, episode You're going to have so much content yeah. so much Oh content. my god, my pipe organ, yay! <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be him all uh, week long Well, there's only one thing to do right now John, this is for you why do you want that beer so bad? Because he's thirsty, dummy. <laughs> and now we'll, we'll let we'll let Greg shoot you the wink and the, the point. <laughs> Did you see how that sprayed all over? Just it's like a, it always just does. like it always does. Yeah, I had to try just to like, like it always you know, does. do the same thing. You That's know? right. That's For everybody who doesn't know, we talk about Greg, Tom, and Chris all the time. Well, Greg, Tom, and Chris filling in for you know who. Which is going to be funny because this is going to be the first time he's going to be watching this and not him not be involved in it. Is this yeah. going to air while he's still gone? Yes. Yeah, probably oh, by, oh, the, that's by great. Friday. Right? Friday. It'll yeah. be on Friday. That's yeah. delightful. So, he, when does he get back? He gets back on Sunday. Oh, perfect. Mm. So this is this will be perfect. He'll be able to watch, and we're going to wave to him. Hi, John. Hi, John. Hi, John. Hello, John. You bitch in Italy, you. <laughs> Uh, there's my. Uh, I gotta bring up my. Uh, my We've notes been doing here. good work, John. Good work without you. <laughs> We've been doing good work. Good work without you. I'm proud of us, John. <laughs> even, we even got a little uh, recording in tonight, and I think you'll be pleased. I think. Sounds super cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we've been working that studio. They they got all ten stuff right before. They're like, this is where the magic happens. Yeah, <laughs> this is like going to Mecca or something. I feel like I should have a little prayer rug or I can, something. I can feel the power. I can feel You're the power, of John. Aren't you? Yeah, I am. And you know, I've been dying to play with John's balls. Oh, that's true. <laughs> hey, he's got three pairs. You can yeah. pass them around. I don't. Know, I don't know how this works, but yep. there yeah. you go. Just like that. Yeah. Just rub them lightly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and of course, awesome. Tom had to wear a green tank top so he's probably missing yeah. half of them all you're seeing is my head and arms right now should i pass john's balls around or well you know what uh, they've already been around a few times yeah. i mean these ones look aged which there are, seems wow. to have been a misunderstanding about what kind of boat guys we're gonna be those are almost gourd like yeah. <laughs> you probably gourd. see somebody about that <laughs> elephantitis <laughs> They're they're on. They're a passing short John's leash. balls around. <laughs> they smell funny. <laughs> Does it smell like Fermunda? It's kind of like uh, like uh, what do you call that? Mulch. Mulch. <laughs> they're very mulchy. John's got mulchy balls. <laughs> and what you just said there, you crossed the line, buddy. Uh, this is just as fun as I knew it would be. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yeah, we have no, absolutely no agenda. We're just here uh, to talk. Yeah, and we have got plenty to talk about. So. Oh, plenty. Plenty to talk about. We like, just did three shows sitting over there. I don't know why you didn't record that. <laughs> I always should record the whole damn night, right? <laughs> oh, there's a lot of German going on and stuff. Mm -hmm. A lot of German. There's always of. German. That's right. Helmut will be back. <laughs> That's right. Maybe we should introduce ourselves by our click and fucker. Uh, I don't even remember too. my. I have it written I know, down, but I don't remember. Tom's it. the only one that knows yeah. him by heart. Yeah. So I am Klaus. Go for it. Klaus. Hello, yes. Klaus. And next to me, we have Dieter. Dieter? Dieter. Heinz. 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 Gunther. Ooh, Ooh, Gunther. Uh -huh. And then, of course, we all know. Helmut. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Wait, one more time. Helmut. Helmut. Oh, he's giving him the... Yep. No, oh, he's just... Oh, my God, my pipe organ. <laughs> Yay. 
Hey, I got like kills me every time. The the last episode was like based on me. I'm pretty sure. I know it only took up like two minutes of an hour, but it felt like it. I was really happy. Really happy. Your moment to shine, right there. Yeah, yeah. just it gives me a warm feeling. These guys remember the episodes better than me and John do, and we're doing the episodes. I know. We'll sit there and text Bob the next day when we're watching them, and it'll be like. I don't remember that. that. Did I say that? Why did you say that? You guys just talked about it last week. And you're like, no, that was a month ago. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, I'll text text him to like correct him on something that I uh, saw on the podcast. And they're like, what are you talking about? I'm like, it was in episode 117. I don't remember. I don't remember anything. (laughs) It became uncomfortable at one point when I started to know like too much about you guys after like (laughs) three weeks with the band. And uh, yeah, I was like, okay, maybe I should back off. (laughs) I might be coming off a little weird. <laughs> He's a creepy He's a stalker creeper. guy. He's creepy stalker. Am I being paranoid or is he busting my ball? <laughs> yeah, your drop game's hot tonight. By yeah, you like yeah. that? Yeah. He's got so a, smooth. He's, on, He's in fuego. So <laughs> I'm touching myself tonight. <laughs> I feel like I'm sitting over here across from Fred Norris right now. Yeah, right. You know? yeah it's good. Yeah, except now I gotta see. Usually, usually I'm planning stuff when I hear him just going. Yep. When he starts going, I'm just like. Yep. You got plenty to do in the meantime. Oh, I'm just like hitting shit and everything else. So we might as well start off and see, John. We're gonna see if they can really fill in for you. You ready? This is good. All right, you primitive screwheads, listen up. Time to make the chimmy fucking chongas. You can find us at Bob and John's Podcast at Gmail dot com on Buzzsprout dot com and iTunes or. At Lou Sam Buttery on the Twitter or Instagram or Facebook, Facebook Live. Live. Or on our YouTube channel or Facebook page at Bob and John's Super Duper Variety Power Hour. Hey, boys. <laughs> that, felt, that felt very good. That very was natural. so very natural. natural. Can't was. wait to do it again. Yeah. <laughs> John, you may be out of a job. I don't know. No, we're just going to add. We're going to keep adding. Yeah. It's like, uh, you know, when they do a play, they have an understudy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Greg's been, been waiting in the wings for this for like months now. As, as soon as the weather. So uh, tonight, Greg will be playing the role <laughs> of John. As soon as John was not going to be here, Greg's first thing was like, uh, I'm in John's place. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, oh, this yeah. is the prime spot for camera action. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean, John? Yep. I ignore the fucking camera half the time. I'm like, I'm like fucking do, 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 do over here. And he's like. I look over sometimes and I look up and I'm like, what the fuck is he doing? He's like, he's like, like making love to the camera and stuff. I love it when he's working the camera. I am not gay, senor. You just make me do gay things. <laughs> well, you know, the good thing right now is with this green shirt on, they probably can't see that I have nipple erections from the so well. I'm so excited. You know? <laughs> well, now that you rubbed them. Yeah. I am not gay, senor. You just make me do gay things. That's a double tap on that, that one. Is, oh, yeah. That is. That is no a mistake. Absolutely. Well, one thing we were obviously going to talk about was that uh, since everybody, since this is 151 minus... Helmet, <laughs> my name is John. We thought we were talking about drummers because yes, he's not here, so we might as well talk about him. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want his opinion. <laughs> That's right. We don't want his opinion. You've got too many opinions on drummers, I'm sure. You know, one fun. thing I don't like about drummers. <laughs> Wait, I don't have the right bushy eyebrows for that, <laughs> yeah. right? You bet your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so we'll go around here. What is your top underrated drummer? All right. So, uh, yeah, you know, you said drummers. I'm a singer and a guitar player, <laughs> and I'm like, drummers? This is going to be tough. So I had to go back and think about, you know, there's the classics, right? So I'm, I'm asking people, I'm like, tell me about your favorite drummer. And people are giving me the funny look, and I'm like, well, okay, I, don't tell me, you know, Neil Peart. Don't, John Bonham. Don't tell me John Bonham. Keith Moon. Right. Um, yeah, the Mount Olympus of drummers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm like, you got to skip that stuff and get right. And everybody's looking at me like, there's other drummers? Yeah, I'm like, yeah, there's <laughs> really? got to be somebody. So I went back and thought about a couple of bands I really liked and then worked through those and found some some drummers, right? So yeah. uh, David Robinson from The Cars. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. you know, I... Very underrated. David Robinson was also with the Modern Lovers. And I don't know if you remember Modern Lovers. That was more like, um, that was around when the Ramones were hitting. Mm-hmm. That was around when um, um, Talking Heads 
were they were, were kind of more that they were what they called like new age new almost. Yep, yep. New and wave were, or new uh, age. New wave. Yeah. And they were hitting, yep. Punk new wave time frame, yep. and they were hitting with you know CBGBs, and mm-hmm. so yeah, that was some you know he was he was kind of a pinnacle of of what people wanted to be in that scene right then, and he just kind of faded away, and I was like, yeah, what happened to him? He actually, and I had to write it down. He stopped playing in 1987. What? He just so, stopped playing. Yeah. So when they so, broke up, he's like, "I'm done." Yeah. What? Uh, oh. What's his name? Um, okay, sick. Uh, no, Orr. Uh, Benjamin. Was it Robert Benjamin Benjamin, Benjamin, Benjamin Orr. Orr. Yep. You know, Benjamin Orr had passed away. He kind of gave up music, but then later on, it was him that put the band back together to do that album. So what was that? 2010. They got back in the studio right. and did an album together. Oh, He's yeah, the right. one that got the band back together. He had to learn how to play drums again. Oh, wow. shit. He literally had to go and take lessons That's to go crazy. and learn how to play. Dr- I don't even get it. Probably heard himself on the radio every day. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. And I'm thinking, how, how do, do you forget? Like, I, it's funny. We were talking about you forget a lead, right? Or, yeah. Or even me, like I'll forget. How did I sing when I was doing that? Like, can't seem to get there. How do you just plain forget? He was how like, to play, I, forgot, I forgot how to play. Yeah, I, I wanted yeah. to do it again, but I forgot how to play. I could see losing chops or like not having stamina or something. Yeah, like, like, how you lose- forget how to play. Twenty three yeah. years. It's crazy. You know, that's a lifetime for that some is. people. Yeah, it's not me, but you know, some people, <laughs> not, not present company excluded. Well, at our age, that is a lifetime ago. It is. Yeah, it yeah. Is. yeah. This is about yeah. half our life, and that's yeah. like you know, you sit there, and that's like a whole nother you know, lifetime ago. Yeah. But to, yeah, not. I don't know. I've never not played for that long, so I couldn't. I couldn't even imagine it. You know, I couldn't. I because I was always even when I was down. When I sold all my gear the first time in the early 2000s, I was still I still had an acoustic I was plinking on. You know yeah. what I mean? Something. I, I gave up for about seven years, and I, but I always kept an acoustic around. Yeah, you know? and you're just always plink, yeah. plink, plink, plinking along something. You know what I mean? And then it's like, I don't know how you could just lose everything completely. It's nuts. It's that nuts. would be truly bizarre. Yeah, like, so, so that was like... Uh, I fell down the rabbit hole. I, after I found him, I'm like, <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, yeah, that was that was a long night. That was. <laughs> we'll Greg, go to why Tom. are you still up? Right? <laughs> okay, I've got uh, two that I really thought of, and one of them's probably going to seem like maybe low hanging fruit. Maybe not because he doesn't get a lot of attention. But everybody thinks of Green Day as like simple three chord songs and all oh, that. He's a great but drummer. Trey Cool, yeah, phenomenal is phenomenal, and I've never seen anybody that can do as fast snare rolls as this mm-hmm. guy can, and then jump Tight. into another part oh, yeah. and never yeah. miss a beat. Yeah, that's so that's pretty smooth. impressive. Yeah. Tight, you know? articulate drum rolls. Yeah, yeah. and come yeah. on, his name's Trey Cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, really. How how does it get any better than that, right? <laughs> Did no, they yeah, sing that can't one go song? Wrong there. No, there was like a bonus track on the first on uh, Dookie where he's like. I was alone. I was all by myself. <laughs> yeah, I remember he's that saying, one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> he's the man. yeah he, he's, he sings in one other song on uh, one of the more recent albums, too, and it, it, but it's only in part of the song. I think it's on American Idiot. Nice. Where they're, you know, they're doing the part about, I got a car. I got, you know, th- two ex-wives and a girlfriend and all. That's, that's Trey Cool singing that part right that's there. Nice. So it's kind of neat, you know. But um, the only other one that I could really think of that, is kind of like a deep stretch because a lot of people don't remember him, but in recent history, you know, in the last probably year or so with the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame stuff and all that, Dave Aberzies, who was probably, let's see, he was the second drummer in Pearl Jam. Dave Krusen did all the uh, stuff for 10, but didn't go on tour with him, and then that's when Dave Aberzies came in, jumped in, toured with him for that album, and played in the next two after that. That guy has like some serious like swing and jazz kind of uh, you know sounds to his playing and all that and the rhythms and all that and that's kind of you know a little bit different than what kind of progressed with the band after you know the first three albums or so and in all honesty I mean nothing against Matt Cameron coming in and filling you know in and jumping in and you know when Soundgarden kind of took a tank and and all that but and Matt's a great drummer too but Dave Aberzies is just like. He's as much of a nut job as he turned out to be, he's really, <laughs> really tight on those kind of grooves and stuff like did, that. Mm-hmm. Did he get shut out of the Hall of Fame or was he well, yeah, included? The thing with that was is that the Hall of Fame controls everything. 
Yeah. Yeah, and what's his name? Yon. Yon. Yeah, Yon Dickhead. Who's trying to sell Rolling Stone. <laughs> I'm not Stone worried about right us now. getting in the Hall of Fame, so well, fuck yeah. it. Yeah, so whatever. Yeah, Yon's uh, trying to sell Rolling Stone right now, which is interesting. I saw that. Yeah. But uh, what, what had happened was they control everything, and they decide who gets invited to be in. And as much as any band, you know, wants to try to do, you know, the right thing for certain members and things like that, they'll say, sorry, you know, no luck. I mean, the bands can put as much pressure as they want on Jan and, and the rest of the, uh, you know, group, but it's not going to happen. So, of course, he has to sit there and make a whole big deal out of it and all that, and that became a whole big, you know, melee or whatever. But It always ends up being yeah. that way. Kiss, with that, that's, why yeah. they, that's why Kiss didn't end up playing because... Yeah, they would. They that really pissed, Paul, especially Paul off. That they wouldn't let Eric Carr, or Bruce Kulick, and yeah. those two especially were the ones because they held the flag. They they ran that flag all through the eighties and the non makeup years. Yeah, so I think they should have been included. Eric Singer and Tommy Thayer. Uh, you know, I'm not at a loss if they weren't going to yeah, be that's, in. But that's shorter term stuff. For yeah, the other guys. Yeah. I mean, that was the the rebirth there. With it was, the yeah, yeah. I mean, that's pretty huge. much. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so they yeah they're always that that thing. But you know, and Springsteen's manager is big on. He's on the committee too. He runs the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame with Yon there. So that's why, like, every if you were in this E Street band for a split second, they had that fucking line of them <laughs> when they all got in. You know, and everybody had a fifty minute speech. Yeah, every single that. E Street member, it was like, oh Christ, you know what I mean? Jesus, are we to X Street yet? When yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have to go into double letters pretty soon, right? <laughs> double D Street, double, double D Street, which is not a bad place to be. I bet. Get the fuck out of here! <laughs> I cannot. Eat- See, he's the, he's the king of the drops. Ah, uh, nice. <laughs> Sometimes it's just I just look and I go, "Fuck it, hit that one." That's the one. <laughs> yep, that's the one right there. They call to you. <laughs> they, call, they call to me. I think we got to roll the Chris. No. Oh yeah, oh, that yeah. was a good pick, though. Yeah, that's nice yeah. pick. They yeah. did their best work with him too, which is yeah. nuts. Like, how yeah. is he not? That was the Versus in uh, Vitology are my two favorite albums. Exactly. My two favorite Pearl Jam albums by all, you know. Pearl Jam's Pearl Jam's like Spinal Tap, a lot of drummers, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah they even they even joke about that in the PJ20 uh video too, which is interesting to watch. They show like <laughs> scenes from Spinal Tap with one drummer blowing up and all that stuff. It's really cool. So. I feel like Vitology's a sleeper. Like yeah. that's yeah. It's such a good album. Yeah. I, I can I listen really to that song that from beginning album. or the yeah. album from beginning to end no problem. And so many yeah. weird songs that aren't, you know, the mainstream stuff that exactly. they, Yeah. That, you know hits for them tremor christ one of my favorites uh well i went with uh pick that he's technically not that great but he's <laughs> awesome uh steven adler because uh yeah yep. i think Go popcorn every goddamn fill on appetite is a hook like, yeah uh, i don't yeah. know anyone else who's ever done that like yeah when i listen to the record I'm doing air drums the whole time. Like, <laughs> yeah. He, like, how does he do that? He comes from the, he he his direct influences are Kiss and Aerosmith. So he there comes you know. from that where everything is like that. They, they he comes from uh, influence because you got like Bill Ward, you got Peter Chris, you got Joey Kramer. They're all that jazz drumming influence, swing stuff, that type of stuff. So they're always putting in fills during verses and stuff where you're just like well, he's just putting in fills there it's just you know <laughs> like the whole verse was a fill it's like what the hell you know they're just writing it right there as they go along but that's what i that's what i know he was influenced big on uh aerosmith and kiss which shows you could hear in a lot of yeah. his stuff yeah and uh also there was like this intangible element he had of like recklessness like he sounded like the wheels were going to fall off half the time yeah and to me that was so much such a big part of that record was just the like danger yeah of it. teetering right on the edge <laughs> yeah. yeah and yeah. then like matt sorm came in and like i i hate him because compared to Ad, <laughs> you're like, too good he's too you good know? man yeah. he's like smooth and like does everything right it's like the edge part is of, gone the, part, yeah, the, the technicality the, well part of the problem is is they they just want it like so they went from being they they went from being dangerous like you know early aerosmith stones type of yeah. stuff with with a heavy even a heavier edge and then suddenly when Use Your Illusions, which I like a lot, you could probably take all the Use Your Illusion stuff off of both albums and make one good album. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But it's like the thing they lost was is that suddenly they started to try to become queen or something. Yeah. yeah. And like they want these epic songs and, you know, they're 15 minute, uh, oh, you know, 
the operatic shit and everything, and Axel thinks he's a cross between Freddie Mercury and Elton John and shit, and it's like, what the fuck happened? You those, can't be edgy you know if what, you have though? piano in your song. <laughs> yeah. Those songs and they were, put them those were oh, they're still great. excellent songs. They're great I mean, songs. But they just definitely weren't. Definitely a huge departure for them, though, and you know yeah. how that goes. Yeah. 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 I was That's listening a win to or that, lose. Yeah. and uh, I'm like, oh, I like the Civil War drums, and then I looked, and it was fucking Steven Adler. Like, <laughs> Civil yeah. War. Civil War. <laughs> That's one of my favorite yeah. guns yeah. on the Civil War. <laughs> Yeah, it's like that's a hook right yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. It's strange. Is my favorite song out of both of those. I think that's on Illusion Two. Yeah, yeah. Song. yeah. I I, mean, I got sick of that. So, but I just it, that was one that was just like I stayed away from because I was at the end of my Guns and Roses moment. At that point, I was just like, oh, they're just okay. This is like the thirty fifth video from these two albums, and <laughs> it's a half they, hour long. It's a half yeah. hour long, and after I just, it's just the Axel droning on. If I just like suddenly he's trying to be Springsteen and draw on about some kind of mental conversation in his brain it's like oh this is getting old you know hey, go see a shrink axel it's <laughs> not easy to keep coming up with lyrics no <laughs> no yeah. two albums worth as yeah. you as you start to figure <laughs> yeah. out Christ. see some of the ones some of the ones off the use your illusion ones are some of the the most uh, buried ones like Dead Horse, I think is a great yeah, song. Yeah, yeah, you know, or uh, Garden of Eden is another one, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, one of the bigger ones is uh, You Could Be Mine doesn't get played. I don't think nearly enough. No, that's, yeah, a, that's a great that's song. A yeah. tune. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Get in the Ring was another one. Yeah, oh, yeah. that yeah. was actually the crowd. The crowd was recorded up at SPAC. Oh, really? Oh, if nice. you read that's the booklet right. in the booklet. That's why I tell John all the time. We hear that song. I'm like, that's us. Hey, yeah, we, we were, were there. there. Do you yeah. hear yeah. me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he, the album wasn't finished yet when they started touring. So when they got to SPAC, there, there was still no album left. There was no album out. That's crazy. So he said, I'm going to record this live right now because we're going to. they were literally the next day flying to Toronto or something to finish stuff. Was that was that like beginning of that tour or something? Did they... Were they? Was this one of the first stops? They were with Aerosmith. Though. This was yeah. no, no, oh, no, no. Headlining? This was yeah. This was because uh, this was the Use Your Illusions. It was Skid Row. Oh, oh. <laughs> there was it was them and Skid Row. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it must have been yeah. This was early on in the in the tour. I don't think we were first stop, but we were early on. Right. And he said, "I'm recording this and everything." So when we got the album, I went and looked in the final print, and it said that you know at Saratoga Springs. New York crazy. for the crowd, you know, saying, get in the ring, get in the ring, get in the ring chant. <laughs> that's cool. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. I'm on a guns get, album. You can probably get really good uh, audience audio from there, like from the seats. That oh, yeah. That oh, just yeah. booms right down to the stage. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I don't see the one thing I don't remember is if they, I don't think they did play a lot of the songs off the album. You know, because Civil War was a single. Right. And I think You Could Be Mine was out because of the Terminator 2. Terminator 2, yeah. So I think they had a couple of those, uh, the, those ones. I think they might have threw in Live and Let Die. Uh, Live and Let Die. Yeah. Because you know, that was a known entity already. Right, right. But, yeah, Steven, Steven Adler, definitely. Definitely. Nice pick. It's, it's, it, the, only guy, the, the, the only guy that gets thrown out for doing too many drugs in a band like Guns N' Roses. <laughs> yeah, go figure. <laughs> like, oh, you're, you're a real asshole. Yeah. I don't know if he's stable or not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of worried about him. <laughs> Meanwhile, Axel's hiding out in somebody's apartment from the cops and stuff. You know, that whole slashes OD, <laughs> slashes, uh, you know, dying ODing yeah. with Nikki Six. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a well, he's a problem. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he's kind of dragging us all yeah. down. We need to talk about Steven. <laughs> That's why the uh, to me, I have no interest in the guns reunion that's been going on for like two years. No, now. That's what I said. No, like no. the old Adler, you know, no Izzy, no. Yeah, no, you don't have no. Izzy. You know, it's not a full reunion. Exactly. You know what no. I mean? Uh, I'm just waiting for them to finish up so Slash can go back with Miles Kennedy and yep, do another killer album. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, do that because I'm just like this is I don't want to. I don't even care. Axel's voice. He sounds like Kermit half the time. You know what I mean? I can I, listen to about three Guns N' Roses songs in a row and then I'm ready to get out because I just can't stand that any, his voice anymore. Just I don't know. I, I, he's been taking a pretty good beating from everyone lately but I've heard a couple of live shows like on YouTube. I think he thought, sounded you know better what? with ACDC. He sound, oh, he sound definitely sounded better yeah. with ACDC. I think yeah. that's what you're yeah. going to see happen too. After mm -hmm. this tour... He's going to go right there, and it's going to be him and uh, Angus and whoever well, they can get. Whoever's surviving. Yeah. What's going on with Brian Johnson? Because I thought I just saw that he w he got up sang and sang, sang right? Billy yeah. Joel. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, he well, sang, you know. they did Highway to Hell. With, uh, I think, no. Was it Highway to Hell? I think it was. Well, yeah. fuck Billy Joel. So. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Watch Hired Gun. Yes, and then he stole. You won't like Billy Joel. Then he stole Brian's wallet. It. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he stole. Uh, after he after he didn't tell me he was fired. You do realize, Brian, you're only getting scale for this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, mine is going to be, I don't know. Mine might, I guess it's an A list guy, but he's not known for his drumming. Is I still go with Phil Collins. Oh, oh yeah. God. God. yeah well. he's, he's so, for, as a drummer, you just, you never hear him in the t- conversation, but he's a fucking fan- fantastic drummer. Well, yeah. Love, if you think about the prog music that they were playing before they went pop in the was, 80s, no, yeah. Peter Gabriel oh, yes. yeah, yeah, absolutely. But he's, even later on, when. He got real comfortable, and he'd start just like dropping back in there for yeah. big solos and shit. Yeah, so good. Well, so listen good. to the listen to the Abacab album. Yeah, I mean, yeah. That, he's got some serious work yeah. going on there. You Did know, you, have you seen him lately? He came on some talk show and sang a song, and he makes me very anymore. sad. He yeah. makes me very sad. Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. He's not. He, you know why? Because he was funny, happy Phil, and now yeah. it's just he's kind of like bummed out. Well, I think yeah. there's a reason that he, he kind of. Got well, he, had, he just, I just finished his book not too, like oh, this, really? earlier this year. He had a serious nice. drinking problem for yeah, quite a few years. Yeah, serious drinking problem. Yeah. It didn't happen until later on in life. Yeah. yeah. And it's serious, but then he got all sorts of problems with his arms yeah. and stuff. Yeah. His back, playing. too. Yeah. yeah. So he, he got all... That, that also didn't help his drinking because he was drinking to be out of pain and stuff. Right. And all that. So he had some... Yeah, he's he is the shell of the man. Yeah. He also, like... The, the production of the drums too like in the 80s he had that crazy yeah. gated snare that, thing that actually and all that yeah that goes back to peter gabriel yeah the peter gabriel asked him uh after he left genesis uh, i don't know what album it was if it was the one with shock the monkey i'm not sure but he asked phil to do drums on it and then he said we're not we're gonna take we don't want you to play any cymbals so he played the whole album without cymbals. Without That's cymbals. Crazy. So they just put drums where the cymbals were. So in case he crazy. felt like hitting, they had to hit something. But the producer who produced that album, and I don't know his name, he's the one that came up with the drum sound. Because that drum sound, you think you hear on face values the first place. Yes. It's actually the Peter Gabriel album. It's still Phil Collins, but that... For that sound and that's where he took it from right mm. and he was just like that's such a great sound that's why he had that guy produce his face value that's cool it was really you know? unique because it, it it didn't sound like organic <coughs> drums but it totally yeah. wasn't a drum machine either yeah, exactly right? like, it didn't sound this? like like electronic drums or something yeah. like that he played with a lot of because they had he had one of the first was it yamaha he was saying drum machines yeah i guess they when they went to japan or something all the guys in the band got one and he was like, well, what the fuck do I need one? I'm a drummer. Like, the company gave it to him before they even released it. So they went home, and then when he was going through his first divorce and Genesis was taking time off, that's when he was writing, coming back and writing all these songs for face value. And then that's when he found, you get to go back. He's like, I want one of those drum machines now. So he called somebody, got it, and that's when he started making all the different drum stuff and putting that sound together and stuff. I, I almost brought, I've got like a 1980s Mackie, drum machine that i was going to bring because it sounds like uh, i was going to make it like one of my favorite drummers and just be an asshole but it, <laughs> it, it, it totally it sounds like you're in an episode of miami vice yeah like you yeah. not nice. make it do anything yeah. except miami vice backing <laughs> tracks it's awesome but <laughs> Well, if they ever, uh, you know, do the uh, reboot of that show, you're all set. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I got something for them. Yeah. That's right. Guys. <laughs> So we all can wear like no no socks and those uh, yeah white <laughs> sport white coats sport with coats our t shirts yeah I want to be Tubbs he was much smoother <laughs> yeah that dude was smooth oh yeah <laughs> I just want Elvis the alligator <laughs> the, the, al- al- the alligator yeah. did he have an alligator on the boat he the alligator on- was named Elvis <laughs> dude lived on a boat <laughs> yeah he was a floor he was a Florida State mascot. Yep. And they put a the the, the uh, what do you call it poor guy he always has that thing in the very first episode where he t- tells Tubbs yeah the poor guy the poor uh, what do you call it people took him and uh, put a clock in him because they thought it'd be funny so now if you're real quiet he ticks once in a while <laughs> <laughs> you guys are a wealth of information I might add yeah Isn't it crazy? useless information yeah. Yes. yeah I'm not sure if we can do anything with this other than trivia no, no, yeah. It's- so <laughs> Useless well, I, information. I think I got to open another beer for John. John, this one's for you there too. You go. Hey, give him a give him a wink and a smile. Come on. <laughs> Why do you want that beer so bad? Because he's thirsty, dummy. <laughs> Excuse me.
me while I whip this out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, it's that kind again. In your face, all over the place. We're online 24 7. 24 7. You're listening to the hottest internet station. Bob and John, super duper variety power. <laughs> You're titillated, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I love that drop. <laughs> and just when you think it's over. Yeah. My balls in! <laughs> All right, you primitive screwheads, listen up. Time to make the chimmy fucking chongas. You can find us at Bob and John's Podcast at gmail.com, on Buzzsprout.com, and iTunes, or... Lou Sam Buttery on the Twitter and Instagram or Facebook, Facebook Live. Live. Or on our YouTube channel and our Facebook page, Bob and John's Super Duper Variety Power Hour. And they still smell like mulch. <laughs> they still smell. Uh, I don't have top five music, do I? Uh-oh. Oh, shit. Oh, no. I didn't have top five music. Sorry. No top five music. We can do? sing something. Well, I, you know, I just I got a couple extra drummers I got to drop on you quick. Okay, I, go for it. I didn't even. We always do honorable mentions. Yeah, well, this is horrible because I didn't even think of it. So Simon <laughs> Kirk, Simon Kirk from Bad Company. Bad Company. Yeah. yeah. He was the drummer for free. Did yeah. you know he was the drummer for yeah, free? That's right. I totally. I read that and I'm like, is, that can't be right. Well, and Paul Kossoff died, so they pretty much. Yeah, I mean, it yeah. was pretty much almost free without. With just without calls off there yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Free was a name. sick band. They yeah, they were. Sick band. Oh, good. Again, yeah. sucked into the into the web, you know, and I'm like watching all these live videos of them, and I'm like, wow, these guys. Now, I mean, you, everyone was Here's like, trivia. Can you tell me what uh, Bad Company's original uh, album label was? Jesus Christ, no. Apple. <laughs> Is it Apple? <laughs> no, they were the first ones on Led Zeppelin Swan Song Records. Oh, no, were they really? Yeah, they were the first ones. That's awesome. Because Peter Grant uh, also managed them, too. Hmm. Oh, nice. He also managed them. He got them together and everything because he was friends with Paul Rogers. That's how, in the 80s, you end up with Jimmy Page and Paul Rogers. That and makes the firm. sense. The, the firm, firm yeah. which was a great super. Yeah. yeah. Nice. yeah. That was. Radioactive is a great tune. Yep. I mean that those two together. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it. I just had to get that one out of there. Dropping yeah, musical one. knowledge yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Yep. That that's actually why we are actually going to announce I we had a name, but I looked up the name and we can't use it. Oh bummer. So we need to come up with a name. We are gonna come up with either a monthly or bi monthly podcast. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Bipolar podcast. Throw me a freaking bone here. <laughs> Pardon my French, but you're an asshole. Sorry, if I don't call somebody on the show an asshole, yeah, you do, it you had to be know. done. Sorry, yeah. I was bi curious. I was <laughs> <laughs> Jackass. <laughs> what an asshole! One of these times I'm going to spit this beer out while you drop it. Like, just see it happen. Sounds super cool. Yeah. That's, um, gold. That's just gold. Yeah, that That's palladium. It comes from the ass, right in the middle of the <laughs> ass. <laughs> But we're going to do a podcast at least once or twice a month <laughs> like that. I, mean, I had to redirect that we one because I knew like I was going to get one, it. Yeah. And we're just, it, John's going to be here, obviously, when he's here. And sometimes it might be all of us. Sometimes it might be three of us. Sometimes it might be four. Whoever's going to be there that day, is gonna, and we're just going to talk music. It's just going to be a music yep. podcast. Sounds great. Because that's what we do. That's, that's what, what we, we love. love. That's what we do. That's right. <laughs> that's what we love. That's what we do. A full release ensures a rejuvenative rest and promotes a winning attitude. <laughs> so great. <laughs> <laughs> the only one that... It's, 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 it, well, you know what? John's probably half in the bag somewhere, so we got to play that. Looking for a little slab of pickle. <laughs> 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 that's my uh, favorite, I think. Yeah. <laughs> He I almost a- took a sip of beer before he played that, too. <laughs> he did have a rough lunch the other day, I heard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was telling us that. <laughs> he ate a lot of corn nuts, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that started a whole oh, fucking... Yeah. That started a whole text thread that yeah. we don't even go yeah, into Yeah, that had to have been like 60, We don't have time for that, that tonight. <laughs> but, uh, so, what was our top five? Oh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, funny we have, songs. We have a top five. Tom brought this one to us. Top five funny songs. And since Tom brought it up, he can start it. All right. Now, I'm going to do a little caveat here because 
I didn't just stick with the big com- words <laughs> with the comedy. Gen- Is that like an appetizer? <laughs> yes, or fish eggs or something? yeah. It's actually it's, it's actually an Italian tumor. pasta. <laughs> <laughs> it's not cavatelli. It's cavadil. <laughs> it's not the way it looks to me. Um. Anyway, hey, hey, hey don't do that. <laughs> little caveat here that these aren't necessarily purposely funny. All of them. Oh, but, that's even oh, better. Okay. All right, yeah. All right. So I'm going to start from uh, five on up to number one here. And uh, well, we do. We usually do one fives, and then we do oh, fours. Okay. Uh, threes. Have that's you right. ever watched the show? Yes, I have, <laughs> but I forgot. I was just so excited. I want to get right. through them all. I you know what? Me, exam. me, and John realized this that we have this drop we've Greg's been using notes, and we didn't realize. It uses the name Greg in it, and we have a Greg now. Oh, yeah. I call I have no Greg. <laughs> could you milk me? I probably could <laughs> if you gave me a minute. Tom does not have nipples. <laughs> nobody nobody not ever lets me try. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing here. So no, you're number five, Tom. Number five is uh, it's, it's a catchy tune, and uh, honestly, I mean, uh, these guys have a great sense of humor, and you can see it in some of their other songs, too. Uh, the offspring, pretty fly for a white guy. <laughs> oh, oh you know, I thought of that one. That was uh, that, yeah. no, that's humorous. That's yeah. definitely humorous. I mean, there are just so many good references in that song. Yeah. It just kills me, you know. <laughs> and they hold up pretty well to this day. <laughs> Absolutely, Chris. Uh, my number five. I first heard ten years ago, although it's much older than that. It's a song called "Excitable Boy" by Warren Zevon. Oh, and it's about this. Uh, yeah. I've never heard that. It's like each verse gets progressively darker. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the, the first verse is the kid is weird and he rubs the pot roast on his chest. It's <laughs> and then the second verse, he's at a porn theater and he bites one of the ushers. Oh, all right, all right. And then the third one, he took this girl to the prom and then he raped her and killed her. And then the fourth one, they and let him out of. Stopped laughing. Yeah, exactly. was, they, yeah, I'm not laughing funny? anymore. Very appropriate, guys. Very appropriate. Well, nice. Okay, I am. And the last one, they let him out of the uh, insane facility after ten years, and he dug up her grave and made a cage out of her bones. Yeah, I, think, I actually like, do remember this song. And it's like yeah. this happy, wow. like kind of fifties, yeah. like like <laughs> up tempo song. It's like, what the fuck is this? Ah, oh, he's great. <laughs> yeah, great. absolutely, Greg. Oh, all right. Uh, I thought five? we were going cl- uh, clockwise. Well, yeah, <laughs> no, we you, can. You, you went through me. Right, I'll go next. Yeah, I'll go next. I don't know. Uh, mine is I'm going Zappa and it's uh, Bobby Brown. Oh, oh, that's that. That song is fr- uh, freaking brilliant. And I'm the not way- familiar. Give me some uh, some uh, 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 background. Background. <laughs> background. Um, I'm trying to think about uh, plot. Just, I if I had plot. my phone, I had it on my phone. Chris, Chris gave us plot. <laughs> oh wow! There's plot. There's not that. Uh, it, you know what it is? It's kind of like bagging on the. Uh, he's bagging on the American way. Okay. Like he's basically saying, you know, he's got to get uh, through high school, go to college, and then he goes to work on the radio, and he he, he becomes. <laughs> He he becomes like this gay transvestite, and it's talking about. I, I'll play for you after the podcast. All right, yeah, we're gonna listen. It's to a this oh, one. it's a it's it's killer Zappa. You know what I mean? Classic Zappa. Yeah, yeah. and he's talking about queers and I mean everything inappropriate in there. You know what I mean? <laughs> he was working. It. Yeah, he was working it. yeah. <laughs> it's it's freaking hilarious. It's it's a great. It's actually I found it because somehow I came across. Uh, Portnoy singing it with Dweezil Zappa's band nice. playing it because they were nice. playing it and he's friends with Dweezil, but he came out and said because it was like a tribute night or something and uh, Portnoy came out and sang it and I'm like this is a great tune I went back and found the original I'm like oh this is even better <laughs> <laughs> you know pure pure Zappa yeah. so. sometimes you have to wonder if Warren Zevon and Frank Zappa were somehow related too you know? <laughs> yeah, out there like yeah. like really smart well, but weird dude yeah, yeah well listen to Werewolves of London yeah, you know, weird the, the lyrics of that are kind of bizarre. You know they what I mean? Very bizarre. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, hey, I like your tailor. I mean, it's like, you know, not many werewolves say that. <laughs> There's another song on that record about a headless uh, mercenary. Like he had a head and then somebody blew it off, but he still <laughs> like kept being a mercenary. <laughs> It's the fucking weirdest song. That's job dedication for your. It's called yeah. uh, Roland the Headless Thompson Gunner. Nice. <laughs> and Bob's taking notes. We got to listen great. to these songs. Yeah, these yeah. Are, we're gonna hear great. these later. Yeah. No, I'm think songs are coming to me now, and I'm replacing ones on my list because I'm just like <laughs> other songs are coming to me, and I'm like, oh, okay, you know what I mean. That's how I ended up with like seven on my list, but I, I just, I, just <laughs> I think Chris up. made this funny slash sick twisted songs. <laughs> he did. Mine are very disturbing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> and that's why we like you, Chris. Yeah. You laugh at our that. jokes, and you are sick and twisted. And yeah. Yeah. You're just you about as twisted. surrounded by assholes. <laughs> <laughs> that too. That's right. Greg? Uh, so I, I got a peek at, at Tom's list. Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh-oh. But, um, I, have a, I have one on there, too, that you had, and, that's a, and it's a classic, man. It's, a, it's My Dingling by Chuck Berry. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's me hard. John, it's me, fucking great. Yeah. Me and John will break out into that at any moment while we're upstairs. You know, I, I get him started, and he starts singing it the rest of the night. <laughs> How you, funny is that? I you mean, have to sing because it to You have to realize something, though. John knows no lyrics. He's never learned lyrics. He doesn't even know what people say in fucking songs. He just hears the beat in the rhythm and that's it yeah but you get a song like my dingling and he can sing the whole fucking song from one to the other how does that happen and he has Home no Woods? idea uh, he has no uh, idea <laughs> yeah good stuff good stuff that's my dingle right. well since you uh took my number four here i'm gonna yeah. substitute right now oh. Ooh. but the problem is is i can't remember <laughs> i mean i can look it up on my phone for a quick second but to go on that same kind of flavor you can ring my bell oh, yep. yeah yeah <laughs> you can ring my bell Jeez, what were they ever talking about in that song? <laughs> Perhaps the little man in the boat. <laughs> you come down in your best little boy suit and expect me not to get a raging cartilager? <laughs> you know what? All of these are my favorites. I know. <laughs> it's, it's so hard. Yeah. It's so hard. It's so That's hard. what she said. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be consequences and repercussions. <laughs> Chris. Minds uh, think alike, right, Greg? That's right. <laughs> My next one is pretty obscure, but uh, I remember hearing this in high school and thinking it was genius. It's a song by King Missile called Detachable Penis. Oh, <laughs> hell yeah. yeah. I woke up this morning with a bad hangover, and my penis was missing again. <laughs> you see, it's detachable. <laughs> that's funny. Helmet? It's wow. A classic. That is a classic. It's a great song. I, I, I got to say, I think out of all of us here tonight, Chris gets the best delivery award. For, <laughs> oh, God, yeah. The way he delivers the song name and then goes into, you know, the explanation is the funny uh, thing is I don't think he practiced it for this. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> I have a feeling he could have done that any day of the week at a practice. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> but I can't, I can't believe you did it. Oh, too good, too good. Oh, well, good night. <laughs> Uh, John will like this one. My number four is, we're going a little Alice here, Cold Ethel. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, nice. I mean, making love by the refrigerator light, you know, <laughs> Cold Ethel. Cold Ethel. You know, she's you know, she's cool in bed. She ought to be because Ethel's dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Alice. <laughs> oh, Alice. <laughs> that's good stuff. Yes, that is awesome stuff. That's one. I think it's been our fa- one of our favorites since like freaking middle school. John always wants every time he hears I just like, we're gonna play that right I'm like John nobody knows it he's like we gotta play that we gotta play that he wants to play it so bad and that's what's yeah, cool like it. these songs are funny but they're like fucking great songs yeah, yeah. exactly you, can't, you gotta sing that's what them. makes the song that's what makes funny songs even better is when they're good songs yeah. Yeah. they're like good musicianship and everything that makes them all even better oh well yeah. I'm gonna ruin that for uh, you <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, you know, your number four. Yeah, I, I grew up uh, on Doctor Demento. You know, doc, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was uh, you know Westward One. That was I put yeah. on my headphones oh, at yeah. night and lay in bed, and I had you know one of those crappy stacked you know stereo things with the cassettes and the oh, yeah. player, and a, and a really short cord <laughs> that when you plugged in your headphones, you had to crank up the volume all the way so you could hear it well enough, and I'd fall asleep listening to Doctor Demento. And I would inevitably roll over, yank that cord out, and wake up the whole house. And people would be screaming. And I'd sleep through it because I had headphones on. And they'd be screaming at me. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, lots of influence from Dr. Demento. So, uh, you know, the, the one of my favorites, number four, uh, Monty Python's uh, I'm a Lumberjack. Nice. <laughs> That's but funny. there's craft there. That's craft. <laughs> it is. It's, <laughs> it's not just being funny and stupid or something. It's like it's that that still it's it's craft yeah. there. Yeah, it's, it's quality. Not, it's There's not thinking. your classic, you know, uh, uh, you know, radio fair, but it's uh, Oh, Monty Python yeah. did great shit though. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. <laughs> I'm a lumberjack. Uh, I'm a lumberjack. <laughs> you know, there's, a whole, there's a video. I yeah. Mean, <laughs> they were cutting videos before videos were cool. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, what's funny is now that we've uh, kind of done this, and you've already done it uh, too, where the interchangeable songs and the list and stuff because of what's going on here and based you start on conversation thinking. stuff. I've got I've got one I'm replacing number two with, but I'm still going to go with my number three because, and I would only only known about this song if not like the rest of us, including Helmut out there. Helmut, listen to the Howard Stern show. Mm-hmm. My number three is Tiny Tim. Santa Claus has got the AIDS this year. <laughs> <laughs> now the. <laughs> The funny thing about that song was it was written in about 1980, I think it was. So this is pre, you know, kind of specter of AIDS yeah. and everything that happened subsequent to that. <laughs> and of course, if you look back and you look at the old TV commercials, there was a, a diet supplement called AIDS, and that's where they got it from. Santa oh, Claus man. <laughs> but it was, yeah, but I think it was A Y D S is the way it was spelled. And I, you know, I remember seeing the commercials on TV. It's like you can get slim with AIDS. <laughs> Oh, man. And then so I'm sure wrong. probably about 1982 or 1983, they probably pulled those well, commercials. You think? Yeah. This is what happens when you fuck a straight <laughs> <laughs> Yes, we were waiting for that one. This is what happens, Larry. You see what happens, Larry? You see what happens when you fuck a stranger there? Oh, How can we get any more perfect with that drop, <laughs> yeah. right? That was, that it was, was sitting right, right in front there. of me. I was like, I got to hit that one. Oh, that tiny Tim. Huh? <laughs> That's it's reminded me of that South Park too, where they they gotta get I gotta get AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're just helpers. <laughs> Damn, that's nasty. <the> <laughs> uh, Chris, my next number three. One, uh, this band, they're actually hilarious. Uh, they're very dark too, but like they had a really good sense of humor. Uh, typo negative. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, yeah, a yep. song called uh, "Great Title" too. Unsuccessfully coping with the natural beauty of infidelity, <laughs> <laughs> and the chorus goes, "I know you're fucking someone else." And then the background <laughs> vocals are like, "He knows you're fucking someone else." <laughs> fucking genius, man. genius. Oh dear lord, Big fan. <laughs> dark, dark genius. Yeah. Dark, dark yeah. genius. Yeah. I don't think we should probably cover that song. No yeah, more. yeah. Uh, it's probably not going to go over well for us. No. No, no, maybe at like a <laughs> maybe at a biker rally or something. Kids parties? Uh, Are we doing kids parties? <laughs> there seems to have been a misunderstanding about what kind of boat guys we're going to be. Oh, <laughs> uh, my number three is um, I got some. I got like a couple of, mon- uh, of uh, you know whatever mentions afterwards. Honorable mentions um, is going to be uh, I hate your guts by Zach Wild. All right, that's oh, fair yeah. enough. Off of Pride and Glory. Yeah. I mean, that's just straightforward, you know. <laughs> you know, I, I dig the hole myself, but I'd rather run you over with my truck instead. <laughs> <laughs> I hate your guts. I wish that you were dead. He <laughs> yeah. wasn't really masking what he was up to. <laughs> no. no, not at But all. the great thing is, is he pulls out the ba- He's playing the banjo through the whole thing, and it's just a country, low-down, shit fucking song. <laughs> It's great. He was it, feeling it. He was, he was feeling it. it. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, your number three, Greg? Uh, number three. Oh, uh, sticking with my uh, Dr. Demento years. Barnes and Barnes. <laughs> fish heads. Oh, Roly-poly yeah. Roly poly fish, oh. fish heads. Eat them yeah. up. Yum. Eat them up. Yep. Yum. There's yep. actually a video to go with that. Oh, yes. yeah. That yes, is there hilarious. is. Hilarious. Where, where did that came in? That that, start, that came like into con, like public consciousness. Not too long ago, didn't fish it? Heads, Somebody fish heads, yeah. Roly-poly fish heads, fish heads. <laughs> Somebody fish did something with that song. Yum. Yes. Somebody did something <laughs> with that years ago. That, yeah, that was beautiful harmony. Yeah, we do a nice harmony there. <laughs> Just like the studio. That's right. <laughs> My uncle says you got a screw loose. Oh, yeah. And You're we on the list, collies. <laughs> <laughs> and we did it in one take that time one too. Take. One, one take. One take. Get the fuck out of here. No, I cannot. No, I cannot. No, I cannot. Uh, you're number two. Well, now this is where I'm going to do a little substitution. Now, originally I had Amish Paradise by Weird Al Yankovic. Oh, that's, that's a good one. That which one's good. The San- he, uh, Weird Al has that Santa Claus, uh, the night Santa Claus like blew everybody away or something. Mm-hmm. That one is awesome where he's killing all the reindeer and yep. everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love Al. Which he's got to start on, Dr. Demento. Yeah. Yeah, I had, true. I actually yeah. had uh, Amish Paradise 
in mind, and then I found so many good ones. I was like, yeah. Ah. So that was an honorable mention for number two. Now Bob kind of uh, kind of gave me a little inspiration to go Alice Cooper for mm. number two instead. That's right. And I've talked about this at a band rehearsal before. There was an album, and this is not the actual song, but there is a song called this on the album as well. But Alice Cooper's Zippo, Zipper Catches Skin. Oh, uh, yeah. great. <laughs> I, okay. That's one of the best album names uh, ever. And the original album, the LP, came with a little, you know, on the outside of the album, it had a little zipper actually on the album, which nice. was really cool. But no skin, <laughs> no skin. Yeah, that might have kind of flaked off. Or yeah. something. I'm not sure when you like peeled the cellophane off, maybe or something like that. But my favorite song, and the first time me and my friend heard it when we bought the album, we were rolling on the floor laughing. The name of the song is "That Was the Day My Dead Pet Returned to Save My Life." <laughs> <laughs> Alice, oh and, Vinny, and the lyrics are talking about him driving down a road and he, uh, you know, has to swerve or something. And his dog saves his life, and it's just <laughs> fucking hilarious. <laughs> Great. But that whole album is actually really oh. solid, and it's a it's a really kind of cool kind of eighty sound to it and everything like that. But that I, song just kills me to this day. In fact, <laughs> I may have to go out and buy that album off Amazon again just to listen to that whole thing. This is well established now. I mean, Alice has killer bands. Yes, you can't, absolutely. You can't argue with any of them. Even oh, right, yeah. even with the beginning, the original Alice Cooper. Yeah, right band. from Fuck right off. from yeah. day one, man. He's he knows always how had to pick a musician. That's yeah. yep. That's why his stuff never really suffered. And for some reason, I never get a call. <laughs> uh, yeah, Alice, we're free. Alice, he must yeah. have my old number. Yeah, <laughs> I'll Alice, update that. I'll if you need a mediocre bass player <laughs> and just pretty good harmonies, I'm your guy. But he can't. He's he's good. Thank you. Um, number what is it? Number two. Number two. Chris. Number two. Uh, number two. I picked the most offensive song I've ever heard in my life. Awesome. I it's, love it already. It's by Guar. <laughs> Uh, yes, the it's most offensive band we've ever heard yes. in our life. Yep. yep, it's called uh, "Rock and Roll Never Felt So Good," and it's about how the singer picked up a underage girl who had no arms or legs, <laughs> oh, and God. then defiled her, and then left her in a plastic bag on the highway. <laughs> and it's and it's like That's this vile. Yeah. It's this yeah. like happy, like kind of like cock rock eighty song too. So it's like, Damn, it's, that's nasty. yeah, that's nasty. It's like juxtaposition of the most offensive <laughs> lyrics I've ever heard in my life, and it's like happy, feel good music, and it's it's insane. It's I'm a insane. I'm a fan of the juxtaposition. Yeah, yeah. he's yeah. had two years. Juxtaposition. Like juxtaposition. Yeah. They've used more like big English phrases than this podcast has ever seen. <laughs> It was just the one juxtaposition. It was, it was, what was the caviar? caviar. Yeah. <laughs> what was, what was caviar. it? Caviar? Nice. Caviar, caviar. yeah. <laughs> Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Oh, so we went number two. My number two, uh, I kind of go, you know, I, it's not a list unless I put Spinal Tap in there. Oh, yeah. Sex Farm Woman. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, yeah. I'll mow and hoe you down. <laughs> oh, I mean, I listened to that this afternoon. I forgot how good it was. Oh, I'm just like amazing. working on a sex farm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but when it was the one with, uh, uh, he talks about the one lyric, some about making uh, making the animals nervous. <laughs> <laughs> The lyrics on that is oh my god! I was just I, I I went back and bought the album. I was just going through. I'm just like I gotta buy this album again. I'll take that. Yep. Yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll take, take that too. Yeah, I forgot how I good it vinyl. was. Just forget uh-huh. it. Sex Farm Woman, and it doesn't get enough play in that uh, in that movie. No, it doesn't. It's no. great. It's a, it's. A I think killer. he says that one line in the movie though, yeah. doesn't he? I yeah. yeah, not the not the hoe you down. The other one, the oh, the, the last the, one you said. The, the animals make the animals yeah, make nervous. The animals yeah, nervous. Yeah, yeah it's, and it's something about like pitching your hay or something. <laughs> 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 kind of like John makes the animals up the road nervous. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. some some of them come around and yeah. some of them like them. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's probably a lot of sheep and stuff in Italy, you know, That's you know, true. Yeah. goats or something, yeah. you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> John's making some goat cheese. <laughs> Buongiorno, goat. <laughs> Buongiorno, goat. <laughs> Ciao, John's gonna love this episode. <laughs> Ciao. Uh, Ciao, grazie, 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 goat. <laughs> Greg, you're number two. Uh, this one speaks for itself. Uh, you caught me spanking it by Stephen Lynch. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's that. Uh, uh, 
Enough Stephen said. Lynch's two best. You caught me spanking it and little mustache. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> where he talks about the where he talks about his girlfriend uh, supposedly she's doing everything that's so blatantly Nazi and he's just like, I think you're a Nazi when she's, doing, <laughs> yeah, when she's like doing these, you know, <laughs> with something with your Doc Martin boots and your uh. <laughs> Uh, and you want to give me a tiny mustache, <laughs> <laughs> but spanking it—that's yeah, great. Yeah, you oh, can't that is it. awesome. Yeah. That is great, especially the way he does them because that whole first verse, and then you don't even realize what he's where he's going to go with the chorus, and then he starts <laughs> up with the sound. Last night you caught me spanking it. <laughs> you know, oh, the way that's that's a I forgot how good that yeah, one was. It's it's, it's oh, pretty wow. freaking. He's funny. a visionary. He yeah, really yeah. I probably I oh. probably listened to it five or six times. Once <laughs> I, I was like, oh yeah, you that, die that laughing. Was it. That yep. was it. Oh, he had the the grandfather when grandfather dies. <laughs> you know, because I'll be fucking rich as hell. <laughs> Yeah, oh, he's got he's got he's got some that dark ones too. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, he's got some dark ones, real dark ones. <laughs> Jesus, we'll leave, that, we'll leave that up to you guys to find. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you guys can find those ones. Lynch, yeah, I know we've no, talked about some dark anything. shit tonight. Guess I'll just go yeah. and get hammered. <laughs> You're number one, Tom. Oof. It almost seems anticlimactic, but it's a classic, and we have to pay homage to the man in black. A boy named Sue. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. It's funny. I, it's funny. I, I guess stuff. I missed this. You've no. never heard the song "A no. Boy Named Sue"? No. Johnny Cash, "Boy Named Sue." No. No. He, w- there, there's a good line, and it's about his uh, his dad left, but the only thing he did leave him was his name and, and, a, and an empty and bottle of booze. Yeah. yeah. And, and I don't, his name I don't is know. Sue. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, you know, Johnny Cash, you know, writes this song about this boy named Sue who grows up. You know, getting picked on his whole life and everything like that, but he becomes a tough son of a bitch. And then he goes out and tries to find his father because he's pissed off his whole life. And then he finds him, and next thing you know, at the end of the song, they're hugging. And, you know, I called him a Paul, and he called me a you know, son, and, you know, and everything's fine and all that, you know. But basically, the moral of the story is, you know, you get a shitty name for, uh, you know, <laughs> your birth, and uh, you got two things to do: either cower in the corner or become a st- tough son of a bitch. And you know that's the whole. It's, whole less, song. it's less funny now that you. <laughs> I know. I always thought that was a funny song, but now I feel sorry for. Yeah, him. the but poor then guy. In, in the know? end, I feel really you know vindicated. It's like yeah, a, <laughs> absolutely. It's like a very special episode. Of, yeah, there's uh, <laughs> a, very, a very special episode of Johnny Cash yeah. after after school episode. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Jackass. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But the guy was a great songwriter <laughs> and, and uh, obviously had a little sense of humor, too. So. He did. He did. He did burn a forest down one time, but we didn't talk about that. <laughs> we'll talk about it. Grew back. We'll, do, we'll, we'll save that for, a, uh, for an episode of our new podcast. You're goddamn right I do. So here come two words for you. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Chris? Your number My number one, one uh, makes me laugh every time. Uh, it's called "Fat Girl" by Steel Panther. Nice. Yes, yes. Uh, my oh, favorite. I forgot about Steel Panther, even. My oh my God! Were, uh, we have to do this girl. again. I can't believe you're, you're eating you're again. You're yeah. Fat <laughs> girl, yeah. where does your neck begin? Yeah, yes. <laughs> Steel oh, Panther. Steel Panthers if got John a bunch of. If John was here, it would be five Steel Panther yeah, songs. Yeah, I almost did that because I'm like this. This whole record. I'm well, it's like when I hit the Spinal Tap album, I was like, Ugh. Ugh. and like Stephen Lynch too. I kind of thought about him, but I was kind of like, I was going to go with more seriously funny songs than like you know because he's more of a comedian. I was torn. So. I was torn, but I had once I once. <laughs> but then again, I could have gone with all Stephen Lynch songs yeah. or all Spinal Tap songs or all you know. It was hard to start <laughs> making decisions. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And then we he brought, you brought that once you brought Doc, Doctor Demento, the Santa yeah. Claus, the Weird Al Santa Claus. Like I'm like, fuck. You know, it's never ending. That's why we have honorable mentions. That's right. <laughs> so you got what you got? Number one. My number one is Big Bottom Spinal Tap. Nice. Oh, yeah. Talk, Talk about, about bum, bum cakes. cakes. <laughs> My girl's got them. That is it right there. Yeah. Uh, the bigger the pushing, the, the bigger the cushion, the better the pushing. <laughs> yep. I mean, that song is, and they're all playing bass. They all play bass, no, and then no. the bass player has a double neck. <laughs> yeah. 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 This is the greatest thing I've yeah. ever seen in my life. Uh, Tom has enough basses. We can play this yeah, song. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> the bigger the waistband, the deeper the quicksand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. What is or it? so I've been told. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I want to sink her with my pink torpedo. <laughs> 
She fits me like a flesh <laughs> tuxedo. tuxedo. Yep. What is it? Big Dave's waiting deep inside my tights. <laughs> 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 just, you keep, they were so everyone. far ahead of their time. <laughs> oh, you know, Jesus. that's Rob why Reiner. every Reiner. yeah, that's why every and uh, what do you call it, Christopher? Uh, well, who are the the main three there? Guest. Christopher Guest, yeah, Christopher Guest, and um, Michael McKeon, Michael McKeon, yeah. and Harry the, Harry Ball. Harry Balls, Harry Balls, Harry Ballsack. Yeah. <laughs> Your balls are showing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, those three wrote all the songs with Rob Reiner. I yeah. mean, that's like freaking brilliant. You know what I mean? Just one, one uh, um, what do you call it? The one who plays Nigel, who's married to Jamie Lee Curtis there. Oh, yeah. Yes. Well, you, just, you said his name first. Christopher Guest. Christopher yeah. Guest. One of my all-time favorite Saturday Night Live sketches was The Night Watchman with him and Billy Crystal. And they oh, walk, yeah. around, oh, yeah. and they'd walk around and go, you know, I kind of, you know, and I just shoved it in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I hate is when I take yeah, you know, uh, <laughs> toothpicks and I put them through my nipples and I spin them like propellers. Yeah, I hate when that happens. I hate when that happens. That's one of my all-time yeah. favorite fucking sketches. Uh, I forgot about those. those yeah. Oh yeah, because, that was I, because Billy Crystal and Christopher Guest were only on for like a season. Yeah, yeah. but to me that was like. All the fuck. It seemed like that was my yeah, whole growing up epic. childhood of Saturday Night Live. Was that one season? That one season. Yep. Christopher Guest and uh, Martin Short doing the. Uh, uh, were they the ones doing the synchronized swim? The synchronized whatever. Oh, swim yeah, dancing? Yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. About that. Oh my they god. Were, they were like uh, brothers. Yeah, male synchronized yes, yeah. swimming. <laughs> Martin Short was the little <laughs> off retarded one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and they, uh, Martin, they won't it, show those anymore. Will no. they? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Probably not. Somehow yeah. they're not politically correct. Yeah. When they did the the sixty minutes one, and Martin Short was playing that fucking uh, real slick guy with a cigarette, and he's like, "No, not, not, not <laughs> you know, you know he's that sixty minute magazine type of thing." That's when they used to shoot those things and like uh, play them. They weren't like live right, sketches, right. but those were brilliant. Yeah, yeah. those were fucking great. Uh, number one, Greg. Oh well, it's it. This is anticlimactic because it's detachable penis by. Kim oh. <laughs> I remember this song so well. Like it was <laughs> that <laughs> just <laughs> that did something <laughs> to me. <laughs> like that, when I heard that song, like all of a sudden, check that like, out. I gotta find more of this stuff. <laughs> this is funny as hell. I remember like. I, I was driving at the time, like I could drive to school, penis. and like we recorded it. it the eighty-eight three played it. Like they used to be such a good station. Yeah, they were for like a week straight. That's the only song we listened to in my car. <laughs> it was just like play it again, play that again, rewind, play it again. That's, that's he would have an enormous Schwanstucker. <laughs> He's going to be very popular. <laughs> <laughs> I want to give one more honorable mention to for because it. Uh, you know. He's one of my favorite comedians too. The asshole song by Dennis. Oh, Larry. Dennis Leary. That. That's when brilliant. You, uh, yeah, I got that on my honorable mention. Yeah, just, yeah. 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 I mean, uh, the lyrics in that are just hilarious. And an honorable mention still going. Spinal Tap, Stonehenge. Oh, <laughs> I mean, that's just yeah. Epic. That's a, that's yeah. You know, that's huge. Epic. Anybody? Any other oh, honorable I had, mentions? Uh, I had um, what what the hell's the name of Afro Man? Uh, because I got high. Oh, <laughs> yeah. well, that's good. Too. Yeah. Because I got high. Because <laughs> I got high. Because I got high. <laughs> and if you're still on the fence, allow me to get you off. The <laughs> <fence>. <laughs> and that's our top five, I think. Yeah. No that's top it. five music. No. <laughs> you know what? I did have top five music, <laughs> and I totally forgot to put it on. That's you know what? This feels just like we're hanging out, you know, during band practice, but with not playing music in between. Yeah, and exactly. And I can hear you all better. Better yeah. lighting. <laughs> Everybody's got a mic now. Yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> well, that's why me and John started this whole thing. We were having conversations on the front porch, and I'm just like, we should do something with these. These are the, we're cracking ourselves up. Yeah. Well, why not share the wealth? Yeah. Right? Why not share the wealth? <laughs> Somebody might think we're funny. I don't know. <laughs> we think we are. Do you think we're funny? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so we'll do this one more time. All right, you primitive screwheads, listen up. Time to make the chimmy fucking chongas. You can find us at Bob and John's Podcast at gmail.com, on buzzsprout.com, and iTunes, or on Lou Sam Buttery on the Twitter, or Instagram, or on Facebook, Facebook Live. Live. Silly one I can remember. <laughs> <laughs> and on our YouTube channel and our Facebook page at Bob and John's Super Duper Variety Power Hour. You know what the one thing we haven't plugged tonight is? What? 151. 151. That's oh, right. Christ 151. Me. We are 151. We have a gig on <laughs> October 28th. <laughs> October 28th at? 
Dinosaur Barbecue in Troy, New York. That's Cocktober. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's right. Ah, damn if, you, if you're a Howard Stern fan, you might get that one. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll be playing there, and by the new year, hopefully, we'll be dropping some new music too. Yeah, yep. Which will be played very often on this show. <laughs> yeah, and on our new podcast. Yes, <laughs> which we don't have a name for yet, but you'll probably by the next podcast, you will we'll have a name, and we we'll, we'll might even have an episode coming Ooh. down the pike hey what's uh what's the word on uh costumes for that's a good question for yeah. dino that's like the saturday before before halloween, halloween. yeah I was thinking, uh, speaking of Spinal Tap, I have the Nigel, the green skeleton shirt. I was going to wear that and just cut nice. the sleeves off or something. I, I, I wasn't going to stretch it too far. I was going to go as an asshole, so <laughs> I had to go by my, going, going as myself. So he's going to go as a big balloon <laughs> knot. <laughs> yeah, I was, saying, I was going to kind of keep it low key, I think. I got like a, you know. Could we know who's not? I yeah, got yeah, I admit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping he comes down in his little boy outfit. <laughs> you come down in your best little boy suit and expect me not to get a raging cartilager? Yeah, I was. I've got like this uh, blazer that is just—it's a skeleton on it, you know, like a black blazer, but it's all oh, imprinted nice. with a skeleton nice. on the front. Yeah, that's. I just fantastic. hope that John's costume allows him to play. Yeah, yeah that's I, a good I, point. Be yeah. <laughs> is he wearing clothes? <laughs> Do we Ooh, know? Yeah. Hey, that's a whole. You're titillated, aren't you? <laughs> I'm just saying, I've seen... Uh, there's been- there seems to have been a misunderstanding about what kind of boat guys we're going to be. Yeah. You know, I was... I'll uh, stop there. <laughs> I was thinking about uh, my Fidel Castro uh, costume, but then I thought, we're going to a biker bar. It might not be the best idea. Yeah, yeah you know... Why do you hate America? <laughs> yeah. You know what button I haven't had to hit all night, which is very rare? Sounds like you have a dick in your mouth. I've been waiting <laughs> for that there's one. Been, there's nobody. Nobody stumbled, really. Nobody. No. Strange. Nobody, and we got to play one more for Greg. You wrote a boat, son of a bitch. You old sailor, you. <laughs> you old sailor. You old I sailor, you. How to moot. Greg, what did we learn tonight? Oh, Jesus. Uh, we learned that Chris has got a pretty dark psyche. Uh, yeah, I realized and, that, too. And even, <laughs> and even a, a darker taste in music. <laughs> so. I know. And we love it. And that we love it. Yes. Yeah. Tom. You know, what I've learned is that if you just pretend that camera's not there, it's like we're having a normal conversation, and this is cool, and hopefully everybody enjoys it out there. Yeah. In the sun. <laughs> In the yeah. sun. I should have worn my SPF 30, I think. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> now you guys feel our pain. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Chris? I learned that uh, I'm really creepy. <laughs> <laughs> I Self-realization really is important. Well, yeah. that sounds like a hot item. I mean, drastically <laughs> underestimated my uh, creepiness. I, I will say though, you you had you had King Missile at like number five, and I went right to the top with that. Yeah, one. So, yeah. I mean, that yeah. could go either yeah. way. Yeah. Well, yeah, these are all very close. Yes. <laughs> Bob, that is true. Me, what did I learn? Um, I learned that uh, Greg will milk us if you know he gives us enough time. We give enough time. <laughs> Just gotta give me a chance, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and of course that we all miss helmets. Come back! Do Helmut. not Helmut. stay in Italy, Do no not. matter how many corn nuts they give you for free. <laughs> what What was today? Six dollars for six dollars uh, for smokes uh, for like uh, cigars for, for a whole like case of cigars and a and a bottle of wine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not yeah. counting on them coming back, but you know, yeah. I'm hoping. I'm hoping. You're making buddy. a big mistake, <laughs> cowboy. So, John, either you come back or we're gonna make a plea for a new drummer on this. Uh, podcast We're right now. Hey, don't do that. <laughs> We're going to use Greg's old drum machine. Ah, yeah. there we go. Yeah. The Mackie. We're, we're basically going to <laughs> Miami Vice cover yeah. band. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All 80s theme shows. Yeah. Oh, wait, no, that's already been broken. <laughs> Never mind, Bob. My uncle says you got a screw loose. Yeah. <laughs> Your uncle molests collies. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the fitting for that one. All right, here's what we do at the end of the show. Say goodnight, guys. Good night, guys. Good night, guys. That's all, folks. Uh, Stadler? Yeah, uh, what? Is that it? Yes, it's over. How'd you like it? Uh, I don't know. I slept through the whole thing. Well, you didn't miss much. Chico! <laughs> <laughs>